I would like you to stay seated for a minute. However, if you have ever been to Ireland or plan to travel to Ireland, please stand up. If you have ever heard of Ireland, you can stand up, please. And we should have pretty much everybody standing. If you've either been to Ireland, uh, heard about it, and we'll go ahead and begin now with the pledges, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And the four-way test, is it the truth? Is it fair to all concerned? Will it build goodwill and better friendships? Will it be beneficial to all concerned? If you're a visiting Rotarian or if you're a Boulder Rotarian who has visitors, please remain standing. Thank you, Sue. <clears throat> well, I have several wonderful guests here today. First, I'd like to introduce my husband, Steve Sheath. Steve was the co-founder and president of First Affirmative Financial Network, which he sold in 2017. And he specializes in impact, responsible, and um, sustainable investing. So thanks for coming. He's here to hear our speakers. <clears throat> in addition, Kelly Child is back with us today. You may remember meeting Kelly, very busy Kelly, a few months ago. And she's back. She's very interested in our club. Kelly is the executive director of the Uganda Village Project. And Kelly brought a friend, Jacqueline Monteo, Montoya, I'm sorry, Jacqueline Montoya. And Jacqueline is a business entrepreneur. So please join me in welcoming both of them. And Sarah is back today, Sarah Amirani. You may have noticed her name in the... Uh, Cyber Rib this week. It will appear next week again, and then we'll be inducting Sarah into Boulder Rotary for the second time. Sarah, uh, way back in 2000, 2001, and Sarah's back, and we're glad she is. Sarah is the Director of Marketing and Communications at the Alexander Dawson School. Welcome, Sarah. And in addition, one more person. Um, Mary Pierno is here accompanying Bill, one of our newest members, and we'll be able to hear all about Bill shortly as we induct him into Boulder Rotary. So welcome, Mary. Yes, when you're being introduced, please do look at the camera. I would like to introduce my friend, Alicia Bonset. Alicia is a realtor here in Boulder with the Landmark Group. More importantly, she is a wife and a mother of two absolutely darling boys. Um, look out when they grow up. Um, and also, Alicia is a Boulder native. So please welcome Alicia. She's here to, to um, check in on our club. I'm happy to introduce my guest today, Patty Breach. Um, Patty and I uh, played rugby together um, with the Boulder Rugby Club, so that's how I know Patty. But Patty is um, chief of staff for a nonprofit in Nepal called Blink Now, which some of you may know about. They won the CNN Heroes Award a couple of years ago, and um, and Blink Now is an organization that uh, is a, a, a children's home and school um, in a kind of a remote area of Nepal. So um, she's interested in hearing more about Watson University. Good afternoon. I'm uh, Marika Mirtens today, and this is my guest, Cheryl Gordon. Uh, getting to know her a little bit, uh, and she is a uh, an instructor, a professor at CU and entrepreneurship program. She's apparently a Watson mentor and engages startups that are in social enterprise. And so it sounds like it's a really good person for us to get to know and get to know uh, all of you. So please help to welcome Cheryl. 
Hi, my guest today is John Fox. I uh, met him actually at the North Boulder Rec Center. He just overheard me talking about the Interact program, and he also volunteers at Boulder High with the Adelante program. And there's Michelle. She knows John. And um, so he uh, was interested in hearing more about Rotary, so please welcome John. Cinda and Penny and I are so proud to be able to bring today guests from Tajikistan, uh, from our sister city, Dushanbe. They have been sent here by the Open World our Government Program that we have. Uh, I don't think a lot of people know about, but they bring outstanding future young leaders to our country to learn skills. And... Um, also, we have Rhett Ertl and Joe Stepanik, who are board members, and I'm going to let Rhett introduce individually our Tajik guests. Hello. Today we have Lim John, Nilufar, <laughs> Nilufar, Raima, and Takmina. I had to read the names because they're kind of complicated. Do I, am I allowed to tell a really quick story? Very quick. Yeah. Very quick. All right, quick story. The mayor of Dushanbe told us once that the Taj Mahal was built for a Tajik woman. And as many of you probably don't know, Alexander the Great's second wife was a Tajik woman. And the mayor of Dushanbe said that's because Tajik women are so beautiful. I would like to add that these three Tajik women are extremely capable and intelligent. <laughs> Good afternoon again. I'd like to welcome uh, uh, Taylor Kesmus here. She's one of our C outstanding CU Rotaract students, and she'll tell a little bit ourselves. By the way, we've got 19 pieces of fudge left, and I don't want to walk out of here with any. So dig deep, 10 bucks, come and you can do it. Hi again. I was here last week as well. My name's Taylor. I'm a senior at the University of Colorado Boulder and the secretary of the CU Rotaract Club selling fudge with John here today and um, I'm going to be graduating in May with a degree in operations and information management. Save me some fudge. Hi, I'd like to introduce my prodigal son, Eric, <laughs> and my daughter-in-law, Fine Maria Rodriguez from Guatemala. And Eric's going to introduce uh, our other guests, with one exception, uh, during the talk. So in interest of speeding it up, we'll go that way. Great. Thank you. So it's a pleasure to be here. And just first wanted to introduce David Lord, who made the trip up from Colorado Springs, a very active member in, in the Colorado Springs community and a great partner of Watson and the board chair, longtime board chair of Rollins College as well. So um, please welcome David Lord. And then I'd also like to introduce Bryn Interkin, who is our managing director of Watson's Boulder campus and um, also a Watson alumni. So thank you, Bryn. Okay. Thank you all. Anybody else that we missed? Okay, then. Thank you all so much for being here. And at this point, we'd like to welcome three new Rotarians. So Darla, would you do the honors about Bill? Bring Bill over here. Yeah, right here. How's that? Oh, no. We got the camera. We got to come over here, Bill, if you can. There you go. Is that good? Excellent. You're making this interesting, Bill. <laughs> Um, it's my pleasure to introduce to all of you William Bill, as he goes by, Pierno. Uh, Bill is our, one of our newest members, and he's uh, here today with his wife, Mary, of 36 years. You met Mary back in the back there. They recently relocated to Westminster in September 2017 from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Having grown up in Madison and received a BA in economics and an MBA from the University of Wisconsin, not quite as prestigious as Marquette down the road, but I won't hold it against you, Bill. 
He was a member of Boulder Rotary of, I'm sorry, he was a member of the Rotary Club of Milwaukee since 2001. Bill and Mary enjoy living closer to their daughter and her husband now and their two grandsons in Arvada. One grandson just a few weeks old. Congratulations, very exciting. Bill's sister and her family also are here, having lived in Denver for the past 48 years. Bill and Mary's son and his wife and granddaughter live in the Minneapolis area. After a 30-year career in manufacturing management, Bill retired as president and CEO of Wiscraft, a Milwaukee manufacturing company employing primarily people who are blind or visually impaired. He also served as chairman of Wisconsin Manufacturing Extension Partnership, a consulting firm with a mission of helping Wisconsin businesses become more competitive and efficient. Bill is newly elected to the board of directors of his homeowners association in Westminster after serving in the same capacity in Wisconsin. He has served on numerous church committees and councils in Wisconsin and Illinois and is a former volunteer tutor for adults at Literacy Services of Wisconsin. Bill is a Paul Harris Fellow and served in Reading is Fundamental, a Rotary Club of Milwaukee initi initiative similar to our Dolly Parton's Imagination Library program. He has a special interest in teaching adult literacy. In his spare time, Bill enjoys reading, bicycling, and spending time with his grandchildren and children and learning more about Colorado. So please join me in welcoming Bill Pierno. Okay, I would like to ask Andy Meyer if you would bring this duo forward. We have an unusual combination. We often have couples, and we have a couple, but of a different variety. Thank you, Marty. Um, hello, everyone. Today, it's my uh, great honor and pleasure to introduce you to two new Rotarians. Um, in fact, it's such a great event in my life that I wore a necktie, so that <clears throat> tells you something about the magnitude of this event. But uh, I'm going to start with the best first. We're going to start with Gloria, who is the mother to Lloyd, okay? Um, <clears throat> and I'm going to have to hold my glasses so I can actually read them. <laughs> But Gloria has uh, moved here recently in June. She was born in Macon, Georgia, uh, raised in Atlanta, Georgia, and then eventually went to uh, college at uh, Radford University in Virginia, where she earned her BS degree, then went on to get a master's of education from Georgia Mason University, and worked in the Fairfax County public school system for 30 years as a high school instructor and a counselor. She's the co-author of a book called Conflict Resolution Activities for Secondary Students, and she has also just recently co-authored a second book called Mud Stew for Two, which I believe you wrote with your daughter-in-law? His, yeah. His wife, yeah. yes. So, <clears throat> very impressive. Um, so, in addition to that, she has moved here to be with her son and her other son, who is also a resident here in Boulder, I believe, and her granddaughter, most importantly, right. And uh, Gloria is a member of the uh, American Association of University Women, and has been recently working with the Expanding Your Horizons workshop at the CU campus. She's a member of the 100 Women Who Care organization, actively seeking a church in Boulder. And uh, she loves to hike, cook, garden, travel, and play the piano. She's also in training to become a Tai Chi Chi. Did I say that correctly? Okay, so instructor, which is not martial arts, right? It's a whole different category. You'll have to talk to her about that. And she's planning to write two more books in 2018 and get those published as well. So please help me welcome to Gloria to the club. <laughs> Don't drop this class. <laughs> okay, so Lloyd Thrall, uh, who I just met in June of this year, was uh, also born in Northern Virginia. Um, went to high school here in Boulder, moved here in your high school years is when you moved here? Okay. And uh, graduated from Fairview High School here, where he, three days after graduation, joined the Army. Uh, went to Fort Benning for boot camp and, and found himself eventually being an inf infantryman in the Army Special Forces, the Rangers unit, I believe. Uh, he did a tour in Korea and also some other overseas deployments. <laughs> I was hoping for a podium, sorry. 
<laughs> okay. Um, in addition to that, uh, he then came back after the Army, went to school at CU, got an uh, undergraduate degree uh, with an area of focus in East Asian studies, political science, and religious studies, because one major wouldn't be enough, right? And so... <clears throat> um, he then went and studied abroad in Japan and China, studied language, both Japanese and Chinese, for three years, then went to grad school in London, uh, where he earned highest honors in diplomacy. Uh, then he went on to serve uh, in the Royal United Services Institute, which is a think tank organization. Later, he joined the intelligence community and focused on Chinese naval studies and wrote uh, many pieces for the presidential daily briefing each day. Um, he then, after that, went with his wife, Sarah, to uh, Iraq in 2011, served there uh, as we were transitioning out of service in Iraq. After that, he joined the RAND Corporation as a political analyst for four years, uh, then joined the Obama administration and served as the Deputy Assistant Secretary of Defense for Force Readiness, which is the equivalent of a two-star general in civilian talk. Um, he was uh, also regularly in front of the Congress testifying on the military's readiness to serve. Recently, he's moved to Boulder to become the director of the MD5 uh, organization, part of, part of the Department of Defense. I love that MD5, it's so James Bondish, you know, it's kind of, <clears throat> um, but Lloyd is the director of the Rocky Mountain region for the Department of Defense's MD5 group, and they are chartered with uh, finding technology and startup ecosystems where the military can expand its uh, national security innovations. He's also a PhD student, uh, working on a dissertation in Naval Matters. He has an 18-month-old daughter, Eleanor, another daughter and granddaughter on the way uh, in July, I believe. Uh, okay, so uh, he's a member of St. Paul's or St. John's Episcopal Church, um, loves dogs, has fostered 56 dogs, and um, uh, has also been uh, active in all types of service to his organs to his country in a whole variety of ways that I'm not going to go through at this point. But please take some time to welcome Lloyd, Gloria. Before I ask Meryl to come up and do the. Um, introduction of our program. I'd like to just to share a little bit with you. I put it on the agenda as our Duchambe connection. If you read the rib this last week, this will be a repetition of what you read. And if you haven't read it, I would encourage you to do so because there are some pictures there that they tell me my copies are too small to share with you. This is something that Norris Hermsmeyer wrote. It was a reflection that he had of about 20 years ago. And it's something that really is significant and is right along with our theme, Rotary Making a Difference. So he writes, many years ago, when we were trying to establish a Rotary Club in Duchambe, we created a Friends of Rotary group in that city, which we hoped would grow into a full Rotary Club. I met the president of that group in St. Petersburg at a Rotary con conference to encourage extension of Rotary in Russia and Central Asian states. At that time, Rotary had what was called a helping grant, which could be used in countries where there was no official Rotary presence. The Friends Group asked if Boulder Rotary could help start a group, help start a soup kitchen for military veterans in that city. Dushanbe had been used by Russia as its staging point for its operations in Afghanistan. These military veterans were leftover servicemen who had remained in Duchambe. Using the helping grant, Boulder Rotary was able to fulfill that request and set up a soup kitchen. He has in parens, I doubt if it's still in operation. However, as a thanks for establishing the soup kitchen, a tapestry was sent to Boulder Rotary. Sophia Stroller hand carried it back to Boulder. The tapestry was too long for anyone's home here in Boulder, so it was offered to the tea house. The tapestry goes from floor to ceiling in the tea house. In fact, it's rolled up a bit at the bottom. I think of this project with the Friends of Rotary every time I'm at the tea house. I appreciate it has been kept on display all these years. So that action and the action of this club in collaboration with our sister city, Duchambe, 20 years later, we say thank you. Welcome to be with us. Meryl? Thank you. 
I'd like to also introduce another member of Team Glustrum. Where did where did Allison go? Oh, she moved right back there. So the mama of the auspicious Marilyn and Allison, Eric, team, and wife. So <laughs> uh, at this point, uh, Mr. George, would you bring the, uh, it's not a leprechaun hat, it's the closest thing we've got. And so um, these are the raffles. So going to support our scholarship programs. If you have a ticket, the third digit over is the number four. Would you please stand up? Okay, number four, you get to stand. Okay, going to the right now, the next digit should be a six. And if yours isn't, then you get to have a seat. And keep going to the right if you have another six. Okay, well, I guess not. And then should your last digit to the right is a zero. Somebody, oh, Mr. Bill, okay. For all the behind scenes work you do, we can hardly give you your financial just to do, but it's in cash, check, money, order, or credit card to your account of your choosing. I think, uh, George, is it $79 and how many cents? $79.50. So, congratulations. He's going to send it to the scholarship support. Thank you so very much. Let's go ahead and do our PowerPoint, and then we'll pick up the birthday folks and a couple of announcements and call it a day. Hello Rotarians and guests and welcome to the Boulder Rotary Club for March 16, 2018. Top of the morning to you. Remember St. Patty's Day is tomorrow where everybody's Irish. Sally, you're a bonny lass. Well, it's a little bit of a light news day and plus I wanted to do this. Everybody, I want everybody to give a big hand to the Boulder JCC and a spice of life. Our meetings are successful because of them, well, and all of you. Yay! Thank you, JCC. Thank you, Spice Alive. Sally, what else makes our meetings successful? Our fantastic program committee. I can't believe they go out into the community and find such fantastic speakers. Well, I got a notice for you on the program committee. If you want to participate, their next meeting is April 5th from 4 to 6 p.m. at the VIA headquarters on 63rd Street. Also want to uh, take this opportunity to thank Gary Kahn and Paul Jurdy for their work on the program committee this year. Programs have been excellent. Thank you, guys. Wow, holy cow, look at this guy. He's riding a motorcycle and reading. He must have learned how to read at a very young age. Learning to read is a process, much like learning to speak or learning to walk. And this guy can ride a bike and read at the same time. He's amazing. Today's your last chance. For only $30, you can sponsor a child. The next mental health lecturer offered in partnership between our club, Boulder Valley Rotary, Mental Health Partners, and Boulder Community Health will be on Wednesday, March 21st at 6.30, right here at the JCC. The title is Healing from Emotional Trauma, and it will feature Janine Dianabal, Director of Trauma-Informed Care for Mental Health Partners. She and a panel of experts will explore the impact of traumatic stress on a person's brain, body, and emotions. Participants will learn the key differences between normal stress and traumatic stress and learn strategies and approaches that can facilitate the healing process after trauma. In case all forms of transportation have failed, 
you can learn what it's like to run 100 miles at elevation. Next week's program on March 23rd is our very own Lindsay Sachs talking about her experience running the Leadville Trail 100. Oh my. Be there. Or here. <laughs> this has been the Boulder Rotary Club PowerPoint for March 16, 2018. Everybody now, have a great St. Patty's Day weekend! weekend. While George is uh, getting ready to stand and speak about birthdays, I'd like to give a quick thank you to George for doing this, for Nathan, Wendy, Fred, John, and Grant was running around with a microphone. Uh, the greeters today, Deborah Kelly and Rich Badger, Rich Urban, and scanning you all in to be sure that you prove that you really were here for the best place to be on a Friday afternoon. Jean Lindeke and Kathy Olivier. Thank you, George. Go for it. Uh, Steve Hawkins was asked by a comedian, uh, can you imagine a universe in which I am smarter than you are? And Steve uh, uh, Hawkins said, yes, I can. And I can also imagine a universe where you're funny. <laughs> <laughs> Happy birthday, Pamela Hink. One, uh, uh, she was brought in the club by Jean Bedell, healthcare. Tim Johnson uh, was brought in the club by Ron Seacrest, senior services. Bill Rubin was sponsored by Michael Weatherwax, his CPA. Fred Hull, uh, sponsored by Gary Kahn, visual graphics. Uh, he's our cameraman, and he's the only guy that works here on Friday. Um, Sandy Bracken was brought in the club by Dick Ekram, University Administration. Diana Sherry, happy birthday to her. She's here at the table. Uh, wait a second. Uh, brought in by Carol Griever in education, and she's exercising her right to not say anything. Stand up, though. See, so you don't have to say something up here, but we would like to recognize you because the members of this club are what make this club so special, and we'd like to recognize you at your birthday, and if you want to, you can stand up and say anything you want to. Yes, you can. <laughs> Bob Seavers, brought in the club by Carol Lynch, uh, University of Instruction, Annie Price, sponsored by Cassidy Murphy. Community volunteer. Francis Draper, brought in the club by Jill Marsh, uh, University Administration, and Darla Schuth, sponsored by Dennis Channer, Healthcare. I think that's all. Happy birthday to everyone. What? Oh, do, oh Doc, I, I, I thought you were just sitting here to. Very unsubtle of you, that was. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Thought he might even steal my notes. So one of the signs of getting old, one of the many signs of getting old is that you start to think more and more about the past, which is why probably this morning when I was thinking about what am I going to say, I, I started thinking about members I've known over the years. I've been in this club for 30 years and just think of the number of people that I've known that I would never have known if I were not members of, a member of this club. And many of those people are now no longer with us. I was thinking about some of the great programs that I've been privileged to attend uh, in the various locations where, where we've met, given by Rotarian members over the years. Uh, names like Harold Short, who gave a program about going around the world on Concord and QET, uh, QE2. Paul Friggins, who was a roving editor with uh, Reader's Digest and gave a great program about that. Dutch Westerberg, who gave his personal reminiscence of the Battle of the Bulge, which was riveting. And probably the best single program I have heard in my 30 years here uh, by Dick Gardner and his personal battle with alcoholism. Now, I don't want to bore you with all these things. That's not my intent. My intent is to say thank you so much to this club all those years ago for inviting me to be a member of this club and to the many, many members, past and present, 
who have enriched my life immeasurably. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Happy birthday. I'm kind of sort of waving at Dan Schur, who was here last week with Ed McDowell, ready to speak, but you want to decline? You want to delay again, yet again. And Doc, I remember, I think it was maybe last year that you commented about, it was either Jim Swaby or Dick Meckley, someone of our longtime Rotarians, and, and what was written in the paper about those particular individuals was like, wow, I didn't know those stories. So that's yet another time for us to share all the different things that we don't know about each other. We could do one of those uh, two uh, lies and a truth, and you can figure out which is what. Yeah, but we'll save that for another day, maybe around April 1st. So at this point, um, Rod Tungi mentioned that for those of you last week who might have wanted to sponsor a student with the Imagination Library, but you didn't have any greenback with you or a check or anything, they would be willing to uh, lighten your load today. Uh, so Rod and Pam, uh, Jean, um, Diana, any one of those uh, would be willing to help you. And we're still in the process of generating more names of students. So at this point, um, if there's nothing that I've forgotten, okay, then in the words of Stephen Wise, vision be looks inward and becomes a duty. Vision looks outward and becomes an aspiration. And I think you heard about the aspiration from Washington University. So thank you all. Have a wonderful weekend, whether you eat cabbage or not, but make it a merry one. We're adjourned.